Oh my gosh, Hi. this off air, off <laughs> air discussion already. Yes, we have We've here special guests. Uh, special guests indeed. As you can see over there, I mean, it's like probably in the current frame you can't see it, but we have three friends actually over okay. there. But we have four friends, including yes. Nathan Rusli. He's right. a zoologist and um, he's a, an expert when talking about reptiles and amphibians. Absolutely. Yeah. How many? Well, let's first take a guess. Mm. How many? Different kinds of reptiles and amphibians you think uh, are native here in Indonesia? I only okay. know snakes okay. because I pre-interviewed <laughs> and earlier about 300 kinds, I think. Okay. So, yeah. um, in Indonesia is actually uh, very uh, diverse, mm, both mm. in species numbers mm. as well as endemism, endemism as well. Ah. According to the Biodiversity Action Plan for Indonesia, 16% um, of all amphibian and reptile species live here, so over 1,100 total. Wow, that, that is so fascinating. And I cannot wait to actually uh, deep dive into these creatures because usually when people talk about pets mm -hmm. or animals that they take care of, very rare, I think, especially in Jakarta, that they will choose uh, reptilians or amphibians. So Nathan here, thank you so much for coming to our studio. Thank you. Um, you have a very interesting story, Nathan, uh, with your fascination towards reptilians and amphibians. It was when you were very, very small. You were actually in kindergarten. Could you please tell us uh, the story or the beginning, why you were so fascinated by snakes also in particular? Uh... Yeah, I mean, I've been fascinated by animals my whole life, yes. you know. Uh, I don't know what it is about them, but yeah. I think the sheer diversity of animals and how different they are and how well adapted they are to their environment is just fascinating for me to learn yeah. as much as I could. I, I wanted to know as much as I could about these animals. Yeah. Um, and what was your first when, encounter like? So, yeah, when I was in kindergarten... <laughs> um, kindergarten? Yeah! <laughs> Cute, right. huh? One of my favorite hobbies was looking for grasshoppers. Okay. Uh, there was a lot of um, empty land near where my parents lived. Mm -hmm. And um, I would look for grasshoppers and, oh, here's a brown one. Here's a colorful one. It's got, you know, shiny blue metallic coloration <laughs> with yellow and shades of red yeah. and green ones. And I'd, I'd be fascinated by those. And I was looking for grasshoppers and I, I uh, came across a dry ditch. Right. And in that ditch, was a snake, a very beautiful, black, um, smooth, you know, shiny snake. And I thought, ooh. What's this? I'm going to touch it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And it just went, oh. and it was a spitting cobra. So the Javan spitting cobra, they, um, they are um, endemic to Indonesia. Mm. They're found on Java, Bali, mm. and uh, Lesser Sunda Islands. Mm. Uh, they are highly venomous and they're able to spit venom into spit. the eyes of Not an attacker bite. as a self-defense mechanism. So I didn't get spat in the eye, but it hissed and it, you know, gave me a warning. I backed off. I was afraid being a child, you know, having this thing just go whoop. Yeah. Um, but I was fascinated at the same time. <laughs> Uh, my parents, when I told them the story, were not fascinated. <laughs> were, um, obviously very worried. <laughs> and so it began from there, you know, <clears throat> my whole family was terrified of snakes. And snakes, I think, were the only animal that they were like, don't go near snakes. Right. <laughs> Anything but snakes. Yes. And that fueled my interest. I think with children, when you say, don't do this, they're going to do that. Thanks for that advice. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I love fish and bugs and yeah. all kinds of animals. Yeah. But I think because my parents told me not to play with snakes, mm. yeah. I just, like, got really curious. And oh. it just went, uh, yeah. Got out of hand. Got out of hand. I think it even started uh, differently. I mean, for most kids, if they <laughs> saw a black, long, shiny snake, they, their first reaction wouldn't be to, oh, let me just pet it. You know, <laughs> you, I would have run away. But it's, yeah, so amazing. I guess you just have the knack for it, right? I mean, it's shiny. <laughs> it's shiny and black and beautiful. It just goes, Woo! Oh, my goodness. And you have some, a uh, couple of uh, creatures, beautiful creatures yeah. here. Could you please explain to us? Unfortunately, right. they're in boxes. Mm -hmm. ah, yeah. Yes. Oh, hello. And. I'd like oh. to ask you guys, Ooh. can you see an animal in here? Oh, wow. Ooh, this is one of those. I cannot. It's not going to jump, is right? It? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Jump. I think I see. It's hiding under the dried leaves and yeah. it's a little bit slimy. 
Yeah, it's a frog. Over there. That? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That. Oh, no, it's different. No, oh, wow, I didn't see it at all. Oh, hello. <laughs> Can we get that on camera? Yeah. He was totally hidden. He looks oh like one of gosh. the leaves. Can you see? Hang on, hang on. There he is, right there. Can we Where? get another shot? Hang on. There. there we go. Oh, yeah. Right there. There. Oh. My pinky there. Yes, there Right there. Go. Hello, little guy. So what is this? Is this... So this is a, a horned frog. Horned frog. A, horned a frog. Javan horned frog. So wow. this is... Oh, um, this frog is endemic to Java, so wow. it's only found on the island of Java. Wow, okay. what's so special? Is it its ability to change its color? Well, it doesn't really yeah. change its color. Oh, it is the color. Yeah, that's... Oh, look, at that. look at that, he likes being on your hand. So it's uh, obviously the way it looks, it's uh, purposely designed uh, uh, through evolution, obviously, yeah, to yeah. disguise himself, to hide yeah. with the leaves. Exactly, so they've adapted really well to live in the leaf litter. <laughs> What's so special about this little guy? Tell us about the interesting facts. Look, look, look at the horns. Uh, look at the horns on top of the eyes. Right. It, it makes, looks like eyelids, but it's actually like... Yeah, it makes them look like, you know, the tips of leaves. Yeah. And the yeah. color and the texture, it's just so <laughs> perfectly adapted. That's amazing. To, is this know. a pet or is... No, 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 okay. this is... Yeah, you know, it's kind of a pet. Yeah. A friend kind of just gave gave it to me. Right. And okay. uh, so I've had it for about a few months now. Does he just uh, eat bugs and yeah, things? Yeah, it eats bugs and... That's um, so cool. <laughs> so, yeah. So not all frogs are green and smooth, right. guys. What about that little, those little guys over there? Here. You're not going to open Are they them, little or are they... <gasps> oh, you can okay. call it little. I mean, if you compare it to a giant, like, five-meter... Um, reticulated oh, wow. python. Oh, look at that. What are, so what are these? Uh, so th this is a, a copper rat snake copper or rat. a Malayan racer. Okay. Uh, they, they go by a lot of different names, uh, common names. Uh, some people call them the coffee snake or the pig snake. Okay. Coffee um, snake, because it looks like coffee? Or? Maybe. I don't know. I, I don't see the resemblance. Maybe <laughs> the, these markings gradient. look like coffee beans. Wow. So... Um, and is this fully grown? Oh, they can get slightly larger, but yeah, this okay. is an adult. Wow. And obviously safe to handle. So. Yeah, do you want to hold it? Just I'm okay. No, support, how, do, how do I... Do you support I'm... the body. Okay. Don't squeeze it and you'll be fine. Okay. Okay. This is Away. a wild snake that I caught oh, two oh. days ago. Away from crossing, me, Paul. Crossing, Away. Look crossing the road. Thank you. But yeah, as long as you're gentle, they're, they're not going to... Okay, so fight. you actually... I'm, I'm, I'm barely kind of got a grip at all. He's actually being very nice because he knows I'm, it's a different handler, so he's just kind of staying still, <laughs> right? He was being totally different when you were holding, watch. See? He knew I was kind of so a what, beginner, I guess. What's that? <laughs> what's, what's happening there? That's interesting because when Paul held him or her, yeah. it was still. Maybe you have a neck. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. hey, I never, hey, man, who knew, that? right? Well, I think also, I think animals rely so much on their senses yeah. uh, outside of what we do, and I think they just have an instinct. Perhaps he was just trying to figure out who I am first, you know, before yeah. making a move, like, is this guy, is he a threat? Seems pretty nice. <laughs> wow. Okay, so I always thought, like, when you hold a snake, you have to make sure he doesn't slip away, yeah. but he was actually, it was an a, a interesting texture. I, it looks like it's almost, like, wet because it's glossy, yeah. but it's not. It's not. It's actually very smooth, and right. it's got this great texture. Are you sure you don't want to? No, no, I'm fine. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to learn, like, what are the interesting <laughs> facts about snakes yes. that most people don't know? Well, I mean, um... There's a lot of species of snakes. I don't know how many exactly in the world, mm -mm. but there's about 300-ish in Indonesia that have been described. Right. There's a lot more that we don't know about that haven't right. been described uh, right. scientifically. Yeah. Uh, and only 20% of all species, uh, snake species, uh -huh. are venomous. Okay. Ah, so, so this one is not venomous. No, this is completely harmless. <laughs> Even if it harmless. were to bite, you know, maybe a few little pricks. Right. And so it doesn't hurt and right. it doesn't... Um, well, it's not going to kill you. Right. And unless you're a mouse. What about, right. What about this thing, right? Sometimes we hear stories like, ooh, there's this python in Indonesia that eats human. Yeah. Is that being sensationalized? Is that true <clears throat> or is that... Well, it is, it is true to an extent. I mean, uh, reticulated pythons, widespread throughout Southeast Asia, they are the longest um, snake species in the world. How long? And so they can reach lengths of up to nine meters. Uh, nine? Nine meter, meters, nine and a half. Okay. So, um, yeah, they get really big. Yes. And um, maybe a snake of that size yes. could um, see us as prey. Right. But um, the animals you get, you know, in Jakarta yeah. and the surrounding areas, yeah. even in an urban setting, yeah. 
They don't usually get that big. Right. So, so they don't eat us. Yeah. It's quite rare. A snake about three, four, five meters, it's right. not going to see us as a food item. Right. Uh -huh. It's going to see us more as a threat. So mm. given the opportunity to escape, yes. they, would, they would do that. And if you corner them and they have nowhere to go, and they feel really threatened, that's when they're going to bite right. in self-defense. Much oh. like any other animal, okay. it's their uh, instinct. Um, we mentioned earlier that there was over 1,100 uh, species of uh, reptiles and amphibians mm -hmm. in uh, Indonesia. Um, yet, um, there are still conservation efforts. Why is this important for you and your mm -hmm. foundation? Well, um, with you know most of these 11,000 species, um, a lot of these have only just been described. A lot of these, we, don't, we, we know virtually nothing about their ecology, you know, their relationship with the habitat, where yes, they live, yes. what kind of habitat characteristics they need to live, um, and how many, you know, individuals are there, uh, how big's the population, where do they occur. A lot of this baseline data is still lacking. Yeah. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of um, reptiles and amphibians, but there's very few conservation efforts. Mm. And there's only a handful of people that are, you know, studying these animals. Mm. Um, so, yeah, there's, there's very little that we know and there's very little being done to protect them, you know, compared to, say, orangutans, right. or tigers, tigers, or more, yeah. you know, um, charismatic. What, what, are, what is at risk of happening to some of these species? Yeah. Well, um, you know, some are even extinct before we even know they exist. Right, uh -huh. because we don't know Because we've them, right. destroyed their habitat okay. and they, they've gone before anyone's collected and described yeah. the specimen. Yeah. Uh, some we only know from really old um, books and literature. Mm. So, yeah, there's, uh, there's a lot of information that's lacking. And so some of the threats are habitat loss, mm -hmm. um, habitat fragmentation, so it's when You've got two pieces of suitable habitat, but it's fragmented, it's cut uh, into half by a city or a village mm. in which they have to cross. Right. Mm. And sometimes they get into conflict. Mm. So conflict and persecution uh, are some of the threats as well, as well as the illegal pet trade. Okay. Um, really? collection for the pet industry. So it's a big, it's a big industry. Right. Uh, the illegal wildlife trade is uh, second to the drug trade. Being, you, uh, being traded as pets, or are they being used uh, so for else? For, Reptiles for and amphibians, right. uh, they are traded as pets. Some of the really rare species okay. can be really Such expensive. What? The, the rare um, species that we should watch out for and not mm -hmm. uh, have as pets. Well, I mean, the only protected species of amphibian is yeah. uh, the bleeding toad. The in, bleeding toad. In Indonesia, we have one uh, protected amphibian species, the bleeding toad. Okay. And that's a really rare um, uh, species. Okay. So something like that, in the eyes of a collector, it might be you know really valuable. Um, so yeah, that could go for a lot. Um, some of the South American poison dart frogs oh. could go for a lot. Um, the green tree pythons. Yes. Um, a lot of the Papuan pythons. pythons. Yeah. Really. Could go for a lot of money. And if you uh, look at Which the one? dragon snake. Oh, yeah. This is um, the book that he wrote. Dragon Snake. Which one is Oh, that? where's the dragon snake? There we go. It's such a weird... Oh, oh look at that. <laughs> weird snake. So it's got, like, Good ridges me. on the top. Can we get a shot of that? Look at this. We've got ridges look, look. on the top of its, I guess, spine. I mean, do you even call it? It does spine? look like dragons. <laughs> yeah, right? I mean, this mythical <laughs> creature. This is not mythical. Dragons are, but... Right. <gasps> so let's talk about this book that yeah. we're looking at. What if? What is that you have in your hands, uh, Marissa? Uh, this is the uh, a photographic guide to the snakes of Java, of course, by Nathan Rusli. So tell us about this book. I mean, wha what made you decide to make this book and what is the content of it? Okay, so um, when I was studying herpetology, yeah. so the herpetology study of amphibians and reptiles, yeah. uh, I came across a lot of books that were too complicated, mm. too difficult to understand. Right, There's right. a lot of jargon, a lot of wor big words. <laughs> as a you know 14 year old boy it was difficult for me to understand yes. uh, also there were some books that were too simplistic okay. so there was I wanted to know how I could distinguish you know species a from species B right yes. where are the differences yeah. you know they're not 
in the, these simplistic books. They just have, you know, the books maybe have pictures and some mm. general information. Yeah. yeah. And whereas your really complicated books have that information, just you have to dig it out of like paragraphs and right. pages of text. Yes. And um, in the field, of course, uh, that would be very inefficient. Yeah. So, like, yeah. yeah. You can't lug around a massive book to the <laughs> no, field and just not really. read, you know, ten pages yes. for one snake. Um, so for this is a very niche book. I think it's for biologists mm -hmm. or yes. students or you know researchers that would like to quickly identify snakes. Yeah. Like a up, reference guide, yeah, almost up to species level. So right. there are some snakes in which, like the dragon snake, yeah. if you look at its back. It's like a crocodile. Mm -hmm. You can immediately tell. Sometimes. Right, right, yeah. Right, but if you sorry, yeah, um, fine. if you go to say the slug snakes right next to it, yeah, right, yeah. to identify the family that it's a slug snake, you're gonna have to look at the bottom, um, yeah, chin. The, chin. the chin, the chin. So it's area. got this groove here, this mental groove. Most snakes have the mental groove. Now slug snakes don't. Right. Interesting. Right? And then uh, some of the <laughs> ways you distinguish different species are by the supralabial scale, so the scales that are on the lip. Ooh, so here, the upper lip. Yeah, the upper lip. So I show, I show a picture here and I number them yes. so people can understand what I mean when I say nine supralabial scales. Right. Ah, this is what it This means. reference points to the yeah. notes that you've made there yeah. as well. So, and these are the other slug snakes and you can see that I've nice. labeled these as well. So it's easier to, because you can visualize and you can see what I'm talking about, rather than just reading, you know, paragraphs. Yeah, most of the time we get to see one one picture of it. Here, you're breaking down. <coughs> you're you're basically uh, uh, superimposing the the details that yeah. we need yeah. to look out for as well. What did you learn? I mean, it's like you obviously you've collected a lot of information <laughs> about a, a lot of you know like different kinds of oh mm -hmm. beautiful snakes. Mm -hmm. Look. So, what did you learn? I mean, it must have been fascinating to learn from one uh, learn one snake from another. Yeah, uh, so what I, what I did before this one, mm. I've done, you know, this one's a book for the general public. Yeah. On what to do well, if you see a snake. Oh, okay. And so it's got um, cartoons and mm -hmm. basic information on snakes. Yeah. Um, that got, yeah. yeah, go on. And, yeah, um, yeah so it doesn't go into detail about uh -huh. the species. Yes. So it just goes, it tells you, okay, this is a venomous one, this yeah. is not. And look at that, guys. It's got a color-coded uh, system. So oh, hey. green means uh, not dangerous, like mm. our friend there. Like ular pucho. Yeah. <laughs> and we've yeah. got um, moderate danger yeah. in yeah. yellow, like it's caution. Not kill you. Approach yes. of caution, right? And then we've got the deadly ones, and that's like high right. danger alert. Yeah, so when you're looking through this, again, yeah, it just shows you an example first on how to what the snake is, and then it shows you the warning system there, and it wow. explains about it. So similar to this, but much simpler, right? Yeah. So it's a different audience, yeah. and it's uh, got you know cartoons, and you don't count the scales. Whereas here, sometimes to determine species, you need right. to count the uh. scales on the lips. You need to count the belly scales. <laughs> Whereas in that book, it's for the general public. I don't expect them to go out and look at a snake's head like this. Exactly. And the more, I guess, it would be the more common ones as well, right? Yeah. That one is likely to run into mm -hmm. if they were to at all. Wow, very interesting. So um, I want to go back to you uh, just uh, real quick in regards to your, apart from all of this, uh, your foundation has conservation efforts. What sort of uh, efforts are you making right now with so, the program? Um, some of the animals we're working on right now include the Trilaxonus bush frog. So it's a yellow, it's a tiny, it's that big, oh, wow. you know, okay. <laughs> an adult. They're very small frogs, mm -hmm. and they were only discovered in 2014, I'd like to say, no, 15. 2015, and described in 2016. Mm -hmm. so they're relatively recently uh, described, mm -hmm. and they are uh, classified as endangered on the yeah. IUCN red list. Mm -hmm. So these uh, frogs, they're tiny yellow things, endemic to Western Java. So they're only found in Western Java. Wow. Uh, and nowhere else in the world. Yeah. We know almost nothing about them. Mm. And there's only like five sites recorded on the IUCN. Mm. Um, and that's why, you know, they're endangered. Mm. Uh, the type locality, the place where the first specimen was collected by Wahyu Trilaksono, mm -hmm. in front of his house, huh? there were rice paddies. That's where he found the first one. And, um, 
We went there in 2020. Yeah. And it's been turned into a housing estate. Oh, no. Oh. And we looked in the swamps surrounding that estate, and we found no frogs. Oh, no. So and so they're extinct ex from the place they were originally found. Uh, although we found uh, a few more sites where they occur. Okay. So we're doing a survey throughout Western Java. Yeah, yeah. And collecting data and to find out where these then be implemented. Yeah. Okay. So... It means that we could, we're still finding species I in like know. recent, in the past decade alone, like new species that we've never I even know. discovered. Amazing. It's so, it's, it's just amazing. And I think the answer also just to make sure that you know, that, that animals, they don't go extinct, is to live side by side with them, actually. So if we find, yes, we live in the city, and uh, in cities there are creatures, beautiful creatures like that, that sometimes we come across. And uh, most people, probably, and I'm saying most, are afraid of snakes. So if we find snakes in our house, <laughs> what should we do? I mean, ideally, if you're willing to live side by side, like yes. you said. Yes. That'd be nice. Yeah. Uh, but if not, then they thrive in the sewer systems wow. where nobody goes. And yeah. there's loads of rats. Yeah. Rats, cats, bats, you know, whatever lives in the sewer, they can eat anything. They can live in any kind of environment. They're very adaptable animals. Uh, that also includes the spitting cobra. They're also very adaptable. And so they live in, you know, under piles of debris, in rubbish, and mm. they eat the rats. And so they are around us, yeah. but they are active at night, and they're very um, slow to move, right? They're very cryptic. Mm. And so we don't see them very much, and we don't uh, register that they're there, but they are there, they mm. are around us. Mm. Yeah. And when it floods in Jakarta, then you, you know... You see them a little You see them more. a lot. Because Hello. they can't breathe, you know, <laughs> underwater. Right, yeah. okay, they're forced. Above. Yeah, so they, they are there. So. Uh, so if you leave your doors open and let them go out, they'll go on, on their way and go back, you know, wherever they, they came from. from. Yes. And, um, yeah, just don't panic. Don't try and hit it. Because okay. if it feels threatened, it it's, will attack it's you. probably going to bite you. Okay. There you go. Good tips. Uh, go. Good by the way, I live in a housing complex that yeah. has been developed in recent years. So before it was, uh, they were the people in the area tell me, no, this was all a lot of uh, wild land. Swamps. And uh, yeah, occasionally there's a garden snake, or I don't know what particular type <laughs> of snake, but our security usually comes by and he, he's yeah. very adept at handling snakes. He'll end up finding it after a couple hours and then bringing it like over to a field yeah. elsewhere. So yeah. that's the best solution for it because yeah. it's a win-win situation. I'm sure he doesn't want to be there of stuck course. in the middle between the tennis and basketball court of what used exactly. to be his home either, right? Exactly. So, I mean, you Thank you, Nathan, for your Thank time you, and for introducing us to your friends as well. <laughs> really do appreciate it and good luck with your conservation efforts as well. Yes. Absolutely. All right, we're going to take another short break here on the program, guys, but we're going to recap some of our earlier stories for you when we return. Stay with us.